This is a mini PC, and today I'm giving it away. This is an opportunity for me to do my first ever official giveaway. Thank you, Geekcom, for agreeing to let me do this. Geekcom contacted me a few months ago. Actually, it was back in May, and they said, hey, can we send you this for review? I said, absolutely. However, all of my thoughts and opinions are my own. This will not be a paid review. No money will exchange hands and no money has exchanged hands. They simply sent me the product and I'm allowed to review it as I see fit. I have finished benchmarking this and doing all the tests I wanna do on it. And now that I'm done with it, I don't need it anymore. And I wanna give it to one of you lucky viewers out there. All of the details about the giveaway will be at the end of the video. But before you ruin my watch time by rushing to the end of the timeline, just to figure out how you can win this thing, watch my review because you're gonna wanna know what I have to say about this thing. You may not like what I have to say about this thing. All of my thoughts and opinions are my own and I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything at all. This is not a paid review, this is not a sponsored video, but a massive shout out to Geekcom for being willing to send this to me and allow me to give it away to one of you. So let's get into it because we got a lot to talk about. Obviously with the PC being this small, it is not gonna have a dedicated GPU. So the GPU that it is using is the iGPU on the CPU. It is using Intel Iris graphics and the CPU being utilized here is an 11th gen i7. In addition to that, it has eight threads and can boost up to five gigahertz. It has 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, which is expandable up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. It has one terabyte of storage. It comes preloaded with Windows 11 Pro fully activated Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. In addition to that, it also has a lot of IO options all the way around. You're looking at three USB 3.2 ports, two USB 4 ports, one SD card reader, a three and a half millimeter headphone jack, a mini display port, and HDMI 2.0. And right there, that is one thing I honestly love about this mini PC is all the IO you get on this thing. The B this small of a form factor, it is really quite impressive how many different IO options you get all the way around. And honestly, the SD card reader was a pretty nice touch in my opinion, so that's pretty cool. Now in the box, you obviously get the mini PC, an HDMI cable, and the power brick. And I gotta be honest, I am so used to having fully dedicated desktop gaming PCs with the power supply inside the case that when I saw the power supply outside of the mini PC, I was a little bit taken aback actually. It was a little bit off-putting, but hey, you gotta power it somehow, right? So it is what it is. Now, something to keep in mind during the course of this entire video is the pricing of this mini PC. Right now, at the time of filming on Amazon, this mini PC is selling for $599 or $600. And if you want another $50 off, Geekcom did give me a special promo code that you can use that will take $50 off. So if you don't win the giveaway, but yet you still want to get your hands on one of these things, you can save $50 by using my promo code. It's not an affiliate code or anything like that. I don't get paid for it. But just so you know, you can use it if you're looking to buy this thing. My channel is not dedicated to servers or workstations or anything like that. Around here, we talk about custom PCs for PC gamers and GPU reviews and CPU reviews and all of that stuff. If you're new, Welcome in, and if you've been here before, you already know the drill. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because Obviously, a mini PC like this is not going to rival a 4090. This is not a dedicated gaming PC, but you can do some gaming on it, and trust me, we're about to talk about the benchmarks. Now, one of the things about this that is pretty cool from a non-gaming perspective is obviously it is small, it is incredibly portable, it's very light, you can take it on the go with you with no hassle at all, and it can power up to four displays at once, supporting up to 8K resolutions. Now, no, that doesn't necessarily mean you can edit your videos in 8K. It definitely doesn't mean you can game in 8K because no, you can't. It just means if you take an 8K display or a 4K display or whatever, and you hook it up to this thing, it's gonna be totally fine. It can play YouTube and Netflix and all of that stuff totally fine and browse the internet with zero issues. But obviously, if you're looking to pay $550 to $650 for a device like this, 
You would expect that. I mean, your phone can already do that, right? So the question becomes, what can this do that your phone can't? And that, my friend, is where we're gonna start taking a look at all the different gaming benchmarks. But first, let's take a look at synthetic benchmarks. Now, right now, I have some footage playing of the Geekbench benchmark run that I did for both the CPU and the GPU. And so you can look at the finalized scores and determine how you feel about that. Now, after that, I ran Cinebench R23, both a CPU single core and multi-core pass. And as you can see on the single core it's actually doing quite well but on the multi-core part and eh, not so much but i mean overall what do you expect right it is intel which is good but it's 11th gen which is not so good and it doesn't have a dedicated gpu so the cpu is quite literally doing everything right and now for the moment of truth the gaming performance i want to talk about my benchmarking experience with the mini pc and at first it was a pretty bad one. I was very disappointed at first with the PC because me being me, I loaded it up with all of my common benchmark titles like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, for example. And unfortunately, this mini PC is not a AAA gaming powerhouse. It's just not. Halo Infinite and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 are unplayable, at least in my opinion. Now, God of War 2018, I was actually able to hit around 30 FPS, give or take. And honestly, I was a bit surprised by that. But if you look at the footage here, you can see it looks awful. You're talking AMD's FSR on performance mode. You're upscaling from around 720p or sub 720p. You're on low graphic settings. It just looks awful and I would not recommend it. But if you had this mini PC and if you really wanted to play God of War, technically you can. And so after all of that, yes, I was definitely a bit disappointed, especially given the price tag. I mean, after all, you are talking about a $600 device here. But then I decided to switch over to different games altogether, esports titles or indie titles, older games, stuff like that, just to see what this PC could actually do. And here are my results. Okay, right here, I'm in the training grounds for Apex Legends. And as you can see, sometimes I'm closer to 60 FPS and other times I'm dipping down to the 40s, but definitely playable. Now you can make the argument with it being an eSports title, you wouldn't want these frame rates, but it is absolutely playable here. The resolution is 1600 by 900 and the graphic settings are set to low. Next up is Doom Eternal. And this is obviously one of the most optimized games on the market. And as you can see, we're sitting comfortably above 30 FPS. This is definitely playable all the way around. This is native 1080p on the medium graphical quality preset and dynamic resolution scaling is being implemented here. Next up, I quickly hopped into a match of Left 4 Dead 2 and on native 1080p on the low graphical preset, you can see we're over 120 to 130 FPS, even climbing higher than that. So obviously I definitely had a lot more room here. I could definitely improve the graphical quality here. This game is old. It's not that demanding, but you can definitely play Left 4 Dead 2 on this mini PC with plenty of room to spare. Another game I tried was Nickelodeon's Kart Racers Grand Prix 2. And as you can see, this is running at full speed with a locked 60 FPS, no compromises on graphical quality or anything like that. This game ran buttery smooth at a locked 60 FPS and surprisingly, it was actually quite fun. So I would recommend trying this if you haven't tried it yet. Next up, I tried Quake Champions. This is running at 1080p on low graphical settings. And as you can see, we are above 70 FPS in most cases here. And so this game is definitely playable on the mini PC. So if you are a Quake fan or a Doom fan or anything like that, you are in luck because these types of games are playable on the mini PC. And of course, I had to try good old Skyrim here. This is running at native 1080p on medium graphical graphical quality settings. Overall, you can see we definitely have a playable frame rate above 30 FPS, sometimes even peaking above 40 FPS. It's not exactly that buttery smooth 60 FPS that we would love to see on a game this old, but hey, it's Skyrim, it's tried and true, and it is definitely playable on the mini PC. Next up, I tried Spyro, the reignited trilogy. And yeah, as you can see, we are getting fairly close to 60 FPS at times. We definitely dip down to the 40s, but this game is definitely playable here. Native 1080p, low graphical settings. This game runs totally fine. It is completely playable. Next up, I tried a game called Tim Tim. It's basically a modernized 
type of Pokemon game. It's like a knockoff Pokemon, if you will. But overall, this game is completely playable at native 1080p on the medium quality preset. As you can see, as I'm running around, I am hovering above 30 FPS on average, sometimes even touching around 40 FPS. And so this is definitely playable. And it's also quite a fun game. If you're a Pokemon fan, I would recommend checking it out. Next up, I try Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. At this point, I knew this game would run totally fine, but it is such a fun game and I already had it installed. So I said, why not? Let's go ahead and play it, benchmark it, record it, all that good stuff. This game runs totally fine, zero issues at full speed, a locked 60 FPS, buttery smooth, and I highly recommend playing it. And lastly, I wanted to try some emulation and please forgive the footage here because it was my first time working with a Dreamcast emulator, but this is Dreamcast. This is Tokyo Extreme Racer 2. And as you can see, it does run at full speed at a locked 60 FPS, totally fine, zero issues. And so this mini PC can also handle emulation. And now I'll give you my final thoughts on the mini PC, and then we'll talk about the details of the giveaway. Now, in terms of the mini PC itself, honestly, I'm really torn on this and I need you to let me know in the comment section below, because when I look at this mini PC, on one hand, I am impressed with it because it is so tiny, but yet you can connect multiple monitors to it and do a little bit of work for your job, respond to emails and do research online and then turn around and throw emulators on it and, you know, make it an emulation machine and still play some relevant games even in 2023, even if they're old like Skyrim or Doom Eternal, those games are fully playable on this mini PC. Left 4 Dead 2 is still incredibly popular and that is also fully playable on this mini PC. But then I look at the price tag and I say, wow, it's a $600 device for $100 less, you could go buy a PS5 or an Xbox Series X and be guaranteed to play the latest and greatest AAA titles. But those are dedicated gaming consoles with no computing power at all. You can't do anything computer related on those consoles. And so it locks you into a gaming experience. But then somebody else might say, hey, why don't you just buy a Steam Deck? After all, it is cheaper and it can probably play more games than the mini PC can and you still have a dedicated desktop mode. But then the counter argument to that is that the mini PC is smaller and it actually uses Windows as opposed to Linux. You know, pros and cons all the way around. At the end of the day, I will say this, the mini PC is really cool and I think it's a cool concept and I do like it, but I do think it's a little bit overpriced. But hey, maybe you disagree and maybe you're looking to buy one. And if you are looking to buy one, be sure to use my code so you can save yourself $50. Now, let's talk about the giveaway details. Okay, first of all, let me make this abundantly clear. I need your patience, I need your understanding. This is my very first ever giveaway here on YouTube. I would like to do more, but a lot of that will depend on the outcome of this giveaway. I'm trying to do something nice for my community, but this is my first time, so please, patience and understanding. All the details for the giveaway will be in the description and pinned comment below, but let me go over them very quickly for you. Number one, you must be located within the United States. Number two, you must be a subscriber to my YouTube channel. Number three, Geekcom has requested that you also subscribe to their YouTube channel. They're the ones furnishing the mini PC. I think that makes sense. And number four, you must leave a comment telling me why you want the mini PC or why you need it. If you don't leave a comment letting me know that you're interested, I don't know who may want the mini PC. So leave a comment letting me know you're interested, why you're interested, why you need it, why you want it, something like that. And I promise to read every one of those comments for the duration of this contest. This contest will end on September the 3rd. And so you have from now until September the 3rd, 2023 to enter into the contest. I will read every one of the comments and then I will respond to the winner and we'll figure out how to get you the mini PC. Obviously we'll take the conversation off YouTube from that point on. And that's it, simple enough, I think. Maybe, I don't know, maybe there's better ways of doing it, but you let me know in the comment section below if you have some better ideas as well. But hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for hanging out with me and get subscribed. I got some Starfield content coming and that's it. Uh, good luck in the giveaway and until next time, you rock out.